Hey there, everyone. Welcome to another exciting Time Off Tuesday. Yes, I'm finally home for a bit, and I have time off. Uh, I was supposed to originally do something else today, but plans fell through, so... Uh, yeah, I'm super excited to be able to stream today. Now we're starting a little bit later. I chose to do that because I want to spend a little bit more time with my wife, plus eat dinner. Um, so anyways, let's go ahead and jump on into it. Let me hit the continue button. Oh man, I gotta remember what we're doing. I kind of remember. I mean, I'm solving a crime. Um, and we're like on day two. So I'm trying to remember some stuff. Oh yeah, we're about to start talking to peeps over here. That's right. The theme on that pinball machine is a standard royalist theme. Used on everything, from pinball cabinets to full flavor cigarettes. Clinging to a picture book version of the past century, waiting for the king to come back and cast out all the profiteers and homosexuals. Basically, imagine a yellow plastic crown with a liquor brand emblazoned on it. Where do I get such a crown? Uh, hmm. The sentiment is called anti-centennial nostalgia, pining for a time before the turn of the century. It's common even now, after 50 years. It's clear you like the hard stuff, Brota. No. No. Try. Lower intestine, the term is metabolic and circulatory system. Fascism, Brota. What? What? Many things, but it's mostly about trusting your gut. Who does your gut tell you is the source of Revachol's problems? <laughs> oh my gosh. Quit stalling, Bruta. We're talking about the weakest, worst, most insane thing. The weak link. Uh... Uh... Yes, them, but also worm. Oh my gosh, no. Women, no. men of woo, you don't like them. They're insane. Their idiocy needs to be scrubbed off this world with rubbing alcohol. Woo men need to go back to the fucking kitchen. Nah, bro, I ain't down with that. That's what fascism boils down to. The rest is also important. But the main thing is that woo men need to know their place. Stomach truth. You're having a stomach truth. Because you've said the hard things that others won't say, the good things, you've said them many times. Oh gosh. <laughs> okay. Yes, let's call it that. Good thinking. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You're going to keep your voos, right? Keep your voos, Brota. <laughs> I'm not gonna play by an upset stomach. There's a slow, painful growl somewhere in your intestines, knocking on your alcohol engorged liver. It is one of betrayal and disappointment. Yeah, I ain't about that, bro. <laughs> wow, just get right into it. <laughs> Jeez. Behind the dock workers, a ceiling height window. The hawthorn branches scrape the glass like bony fingers. The men are talking, but you swear you hear those black limbs tap on the window as the wind blows outside. Very low. It's, it's not time yet. Mysterious. Uh, okay, well, I guess I can try it later. No. 
nothing, just black tangles like the hair of an old woman, motionless. The wind in the yard doesn't reach the Hawthorne, nor does the light come in from this window. There's a little slide panel up there to let some air in. No need to open it in spring. It's still too cold outside. You're not so sure about that. Somehow you just know there's something out there behind the glass. Yeah, your mother. <laughs> and Lynn told you. <laughs> Uh, I'm probably going to fail, but let's try again. Why not? Nothing. As before. Just black branches. What's this weirdo cop doing now, huh? Window shopping? I think he's trying to find dirt on us. In our box. It's what they do, Chanks. Did you know policemen are sometimes called pigs? Wow. No. I hadn't heard that. <laughs> yeah. Because they like to sniff around in dirt. This is where you say your bed. <laughs> Detective. Knowledge is you with a sharp note. Precinct 57's finest scans the room, leaving the speaking to you. He trusts you. Maybe against his better judgment, but he does. Well, this might be a gamble, but knowing what I know about human behavior and stuff, let's just do this. Hey, hey dipshit, you hard of hearing or something? The boss man's talking to you. What, is he fucking kidding? This guy high or something? Hey asshole, up here, we're talking to you. We are looking for Titus Hardy. Why did you have to say anything, Kim? You should have just left it alone. It's whoever talks first. Nah, we're not gonna real little lie. Oh, this is about him. A real looker, that one. You're sure taking your time, waiting for him to get ripe and pretty for you, huh? Oh, he was a real pretty boy by now. Real hot stuff. Letting out that pretty boy smell. Time to go to work in the shit factory! Easy, boys. These janitors have a hell of a job cut out for them. I mean, I wouldn't go in there for a million. You might want to start asking your questions now. It's not going to get better than this. These guys are so macho, they're ready to confess to first-degree murder. Ask if it was them. Do a head count first. Connect these men to the tracks you saw in the yard. Chances are they're going to match. Starting from the right, boot size 44, blonde man, in his 30s, overbearingly masculine, sitting on his right, standard working boots, size 45 or 46, eldest in the room, probably mid-50s, smoker, quiet, across at the other table, hobnailed working boots, size 43, gang tattoos, Mesk or Sarah Maritzian in his late thirties, early forties. He spent his youth in Villa Labos, a housing project in the Jamrock Quarter. There were incarcerations, hard to say what else. The ink is fading. And then, standard working boot, steel reinforced toes, size 46, the big dick, 
wide at the shoulders and lean at the hips. Rugby cap, fingerless gloves, and numerous scars, a little under 40. The emblem on his vest says Rowan Club. A little patch below it reads T. Hardy, Captain. In the far corner, standard working boot, steel reinforced toes, size 44. 40 something, non alcoholic beverage in hand. You squint. Is that a plectrum? On his neck. Forget it. It's not important. Let's call this one the musician. <laughs> Something about my brain knew he was drama. Size 41, with the light step. Not a child, after all. An older man with a rat face, mean, watery eyes, and two front teeth missing. In the middle, heaving and wheezing. Big guy. Boot size 46, deep marks. Probably carried the victim over. He alone is 130 kilos. Add the man in armor and you could easily exceed 220. In conclusion, these seven are the actors on the crime scene. The footprints were theirs, but there's a discrepancy. Exactly. You've stood there for about four seconds, not saying anything. Hit them with questions. Where's the eighth Hardy? The fuck is with you, fella? Hmm. Do I want to start with it, or do I want to go? Let's see. The pretty boy. You guys really love talking about that pretty boy. Funny. But my partner and I have a serious matter to discuss with you. You mean these boots? We all got a pair. We wore them the night we took the pretty boy out back and hung him by the neck. Wow, that's just strange. Yeah, we did this together, all of us, until he was dead. That's why our prints are all over the scene. Goddamn right. I. No. These seven honest men have equally come forth. They told you what happened so that you don't waste any more of your time. How many people have you sent to the Chaise? Ever felt remorse for them? Chaise Electrique is the method of capital punishment in Revachon under the coalition. During the suzerain's reign, it used to be the firing squad. Or send them to Reunion to rot. For 20 years. For life. He says as if you're... The River Esperance Correctional Facility, a military prison run by the coalition, dubbed Reunion by the inmates. The origin of the name is unknown. Oh, so you are just a simple, well-meaning man, eh? Ever been in solitary? Prison is a charter. That's what it is. He's clearly been in solitary confinement, and at a young age, nonetheless. So is hanging a man, slowly, without breaking his neck. 
Are you deaf? There will be no singling anyone out. You can't arrest a Hardy boy without arresting all Hardy boys. Do you think you could do that? Do you think you could arrest them all? That's for the courts in Le Jardin to decide, not for the officer making an arrest, which we all know you won't be. What you can do right now is go back to your station and write a report. No, no. We'll stay here and discuss what happened that night. You don't have to keep answering his questions. I know, Lizzie. Relax. We killed him last Sunday night. Seemed like a good way to end the week. Known him? We don't associate with scum like that, asshole. Yeah! Who do you think we are? Quiet. He came around about three weeks ago when that Pines cow first sailed into town. Happy? By the Pines cow, you mean the representative for Wild Pines? The shipping company you are striking against? No. I mean the Pines cow. The stupid-ass cow they sent in to fuck us over. But you know what? Why don't you ask her about the pretty boy? I'm sure she has interesting things to say when you ask her hard enough. That's enough insinuation for today, Titus. Officer, your interview is drawing to an end. Don't waste your last questions. Why? Cause he was worthless mercenary scum. And he stepped out of line in my town. And he stepped out of line. What kind of mercenary? The kind that shows up when you start a strike. The experienced kind, too. Had Kohoi and Semenine written all over him. Ex Oranese Special Forces. A live grenade, right here in our bar. This one has a special gripe with him coming here. I can't prove it, but I know he was sent by the Wild Pines. They hire merc shit like that. Story of every strike from here to Samara. Cause one night he walked straight up to the mic and said, I'm Oranese, goddamn Special Forces. And I'm gonna fuck you all! Really? Yeah, really. Had a gin and tonic up there, sang some r and paratrooper song, and said he's gonna fuck everyone. We couldn't believe it either, but he fucking did. Right there. Like some kind of animal. Wrong. He harassed women, raped one, harassed workers, threatened to kill some as a warning. There's a slight unease in him, suddenly. He regrets mentioning the rape. To kill us all, if we don't open the gates, if we don't let the scabs in, if we don't bend over. And that was before he started coming here. Yeah, he said it was his favorite joint now. Started coming here every night. Drinking, grabbing girls, Grab one of ours mid-karaoke, right there on the stage. He grabbed someone? Yeah. This girl's on the mic. A beautiful girl, young. Gets into the second verse of Lover Lake. The fucker grabs her legs, starts screaming. Show me your cunt! Why don't you show me your cunt? Then, he gets knocked on the head with a wine bottle. Doesn't even fall down. Aren't you fucking listening? My man is talking to you. He took care of it. They got the girl out before anything else could happen. Yeah, me and Eugene got her out. Aren't you fucking listening? No, you're not getting the name. 
That's a Martinez matter. And I'm not discussing it with you clowns. Despite the stonewalling, you can slip one more question in. Titus, do not answer. You have been forthcoming enough. Fuck off, Carl. She's gone through enough without you harassing her too. She doesn't need more embarrassment. What are you talking about, embarrassment? If someone has been sexually assaulted, we need to... What you need is to get the fuck out of my face. I've had enough of explaining myself to you fucks. He's dead. It's done. As you can see, these men can only take so much baseless scrutiny. I'm doing my best to keep the situation civil, but... It's true. She was the only thing holding me back. We hanged him up by his neck until he got real still. Wasn't that obvious, copper? Didn't they teach you anything at the cop school, idiot? Can you give us a few more details? Did you muffle him? We haven't heard any reports of screams. Titus, you don't have to clarify anything. We overpowered him. Dragged his unconscious body to the tree. Put a noose around his neck. And hanged him till he was dead and steady. Then we left him for seagulls, maggots, and you fucks. With numbers, asshole. How do you think? You're right, Lizzie. I've done enough explaining here. Take it. No, he hasn't. Not yet. <laughs> Weren't you fucking listening? The fucker came to our bar. It happened right here. Yeah, I got it. Titus is solid as a rock, and so are a few others. But hmm. Elaine, who looks like he might be Titus's right hand man, the least antsy of the bunch. Definitely not his first time being questioned by the police. This little rat-faced fellow is solid, too. Always fidgety, yes, but no change there. Oh my gosh, stupid. Spammer, there's in my chat. Spam, 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 go away. Chat, you stupid spam. All right, here we go. My name looks like Mars and Ram. Him neither. Mostly keeps to his tomato juice or whatever he's got there. <laughs> yep, he's smoking proud sponge, just like just the most like a chain. Hmm. 
No. Of course he's having trouble breathing. Just look at how fucking fat he is. <laughs> Fuck off, Shanky. Angus is a powerful guy. All muscle. Keep your eye on this powerful guy. Sooner or later, he's going to break like a piece of twig. And fuck you, too, copper. Picking on Angus like this. We're done with this schoolyard shit. And just so you know, he doesn't have trouble breathing. His all-muscle comment wasn't sarcastic. He's genuinely trying to look out for Angus. This one is a stone wall. You won't get more out of them about the night of the murder. Not yet. Like what, copper? I ain't gonna do that, because that's gonna pick an altercation I'll get my ass kicked. <laughs> uh, let's see. Check my... Oh, I leveled up. I didn't even realize I leveled up. Hmm. What are we gonna upgrade? Base friend vampire survived. I do like him vampire. I do wanna beef up one of my things that sucks. Let's increase something. Yeah, let's do, let's do logic here. I kind of want to do like perception, endurance. Let's see what I think I might be able to go ahead and see if I'm going to fight that dude. I dream it, I could have swore I had a level up. Nothing. Your investigation here is done. Leave Martinez, go back to your stations where you belong. I think we're going to stick around, thanks. Some things don't add up here, Titus. I've done this job for long enough to know that people don't just confess to first-degree murder. Even if it is a group responsibility, we're going to look into this. Good luck with that. You've heard everything a rent -a cop is gonna hear from us, real law officials. You're lucky you didn't get a beaten.
Rent-a-Cop? So that's what this is about. He doesn't see you as his equals. What are you talking about, madman? There's no eighth hardy boy. There's seven of us and we're all here. Or what? You want to be the eighth hardy boy? We ain't hiring. Actually, boss, we've been talking and we think she could maybe... This person Glenn wants to hire, he really respects her. Shut the fuck up, Glenn! I do the talking here. Now what the fuck do you want, cop? So, let me get this straight. There is an ace hardy boy. It's a she, and you don't like us talking about her? That's right. We're not talking about this. This is a private hardy boy's matter. Nothing to do with your shit. End. You're not cops here. Don't go digging around if you don't want a bullet in the back of your head. I'm watching you. Good. We are all watching each other. Officer, your question. There's no point in pushing it further, he thinks. This is already a victory. We'll learn more about this eighth hardy sooner or later. This proves it, but unless I think I think I was it's only a three percent because I think I have to roll twelve, which we're just gonna Again. Just get the dead guy's autograph, since you're his biggest fan. <laughs> Good one, Titus! About fucking time. Okay. Sheesh. Ooh, auto save. I've got nothing to say to you. Why are you wasting your time? I am not. You could be Liz. You could be anything. You could even be a model. Even a mod? Glenn, I went to law school. I am an attorney. He's right. With a face like that, she could be on the cover of Le Debutante International. <laughs> so fucking what? Lots of models are actually really smart people, fuckwad. That's true. No, Glenn. They aren't. <laughs> it's not her. She's not a hardy girl. Definitely. Was that? Could it be the Koldamama Dakwa? No, it's probably just your imagination ringing in your ear. What does that even mean? There seems to be an extremely high-pitched ring. Ultrasonic. Lena said it was very high-pitched, right? It's like something 
tickles your ear. There it is again. You are about to rediscover a long lost species. It must be very close. Maybe, just maybe, it will come toward you. No, I don't hear the call to Mama Dakwa, and neither do you. Of course he doesn't. He's deaf. Oh no. The sound. It's moving away. Somewhere over there. Go after it. No. Too late. It's gone. There is no ringing anymore. Just the sound of the streets. It's like everything else. <laughs> Keep your ears peeled, then. If the species really has migrated to Martinez, you're sure to hear it again. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> new thought. Let's see. Ah. I see a thing. How long is it going to take me to, to level up? That'd be really handy. Research bonus none. Okay. Um, sure, why not? Stacking again. That's She's Oh, it's you again. Are you looking for a die?
Very good. That will be seven real for one custom die. One universal die for Wero Untethered. It feels icy. Just holding this die in your hand sends a jolt of cold down your spine. Through the dark resin, you can make out a nugget of bone hewn from an alligator's jaw. Alligator jaw? That's crazy. You feel nothing. If anything, it's uncomfortably warm in here. You need to connect, so you know. She has begun to idly clean one of her carving tools with a dirty kerchief. The tool's sharp edge shining in the light of her desk lamp. I'm listening. Good. I hope it clarified things a bit. What do you see? There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. The smell is repulsive. It pushes in from your mouth, more instant and more familiar than anything you'd expected, more fever than odor. It fills your mind, flushing you from within. Gross. 
too late. It's impossible to keep in. Your body curls and pushes it out, burst by burst, until a pool of vomit lies under your feet and your throat stings from the stomach acid. It's okay. Happens to everyone. Keep it. The hangover is clearly making this worse for you. You could use some ammonia to clear your head. If you can handle the headache, some officers use it to deal with cadaverine odor. I can't handle the headache. It's more likely he can handle the smell, unlike you. That young woman, the gardener, mentioned she used salts for the smell. If she doesn't have any, there might be some in the Fritz store nearby. Acquiring ammonia will provide a modifier to the white check. Modifiers make checks easier and allow you to retry them. I've got nothing to say to you. Why are you wasting? I've got nothing to say to you. Why are you wasting? Um, is this about the questions again? Because I don't really know anything. She looks up from her magazine, eyes filled with tired ennui. Yes, what we have is there, in the medicine cabinet. Go take a look yourself. The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says, one bottle equals ten cents. A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles, nasal sprays, and blister packs. They all bear the Saint-Baptiste Pharmaceutics logo. Saint-Baptiste, you know, the pharmaceuticals company. Saint-Baptiste Pharmaceuticals, the one that sells meds out of Saint-Baptiste. That one, there. She is right. Saint-Baptiste, the company, derives its name from Saint-Baptiste, the city. Itself so named, because that's what it is. 
a rare case where that really is the full etymological history, as far as almost anyone knows, at least. <laughs> Okay, don't, like, overdo it or something. You see several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf beneath a display of croissants and juice bottles. The raincoats are transparent, except for the big Fritta slogan on the back. What is what? Um, it's a raincoat. If you want to buy one, then it's only for Royale. Here you go. There, he still is, looking right through you, with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated. The ammonia only makes it worse. Oh my gosh. The combination forces tears out of your ducts. You manage to keep it in once. The second time, not so much. Oh my gosh. When the vomiting is done, your cheeks are wet with tears. Are you okay, officer? The weight is reassuring, like a crenel on solid fortification. Pat, pat, pat. You're facing tough odds here. It's aggravated further by alcohol withdrawal. I've seen captains puke their guts out. It never gets easier. You never get used to the smell. Every Monday, he's cadaver day. Throw up, investigate. Throw up, initial autopsy. Throw up, baguette. Then drive to the station. Maybe throw up on the way there, if you didn't bag the thing tight enough. I think I've lost my sense of smell. Not being hungover helps, too. No, this is a two-man assignment because it needs two officers to complete. I need your help. You need to get your shit together. <laughs> we should go talk to the locals, find something else to do while the wind changes. It's pretty bad right now. You've gained a thought. When this dialogue is over, go to your thought cabinet and internalize it with special bonuses and effects. Okay. Give it half an hour, get yourself together, then come back and have another go.
ship apart each other because of the copy of being. It's supposed to be the opposite of that. Together. Compress a small area to achieve a solid level of ship compression. Squeeze your butt cheeks together for 30 minutes. Do something similar with the two hemispheres of your brain. Talk to people. <laughs> oh, well. Why do I lock the slots? Okay. Yeah, like a fucking volcano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking pathetic. You were lucky you didn't die there. Yeah, Kuno's got some advice for you. What are you? <laughs> like eighty, right? Maybe you should stop embarrassing yourself in front of a fucking kid. You found Kuno's secret door to Kuno's secret shack. It was closed for 5,000 years. How the fuck did you get in? <laughs> <sighs> Shit. Get the fuck out of here. You can't do that. You can't do that, Kuno. He's trying to fuck at you again! Pigs can't displace. Can't do that teleport shit. <laughs> How did you like it in there, pig old boy? Kuno's got a lot of cool shit there, right? Oh, that! Kuno decapitates pigs. That's just a Kuno demo tape. Yeah, Kuno plays on Snuff Radio, fucks pigs, live, fucks their heads off. Kuno's a cop killer. That's where Kuno gets his daily hit of electric. Kuno Shazam. Kuno rides the fucking lightning in there, pig. Bet you'd like to ride the lightning too, wouldn't you? You feel tired and old, but you could have that sparkle in your eyes. It's a vitamin, pig. Don't you know anything? You could use them. <laughs> Darren's failure. Oh. Yeah, it's the Mac. You fucking need that shit to stay on top of your game. Kuno goes through like a tube a day, rips Mag like a motherfucker, and you could use a bottle. Oh, don't teach him, Kuno. He's gonna use it against you, Kuno. You're not getting this pig. It completely takes away the hangover. It's like you didn't do anything. Like you stayed home playing with your choo-choo. Fuck you, pig. Don't do mag. You're gonna OD and you're gonna fucking die. Of course you fucking can. How do you think Kuno made all the docky boys his gimps? Just gotta fly, pig. Not for you, pig. Kuno can't wait to see you get all scared and shit your pants. Kuno can't wait to see you shit your fat pants. That's all there is to it then. Don't be a pansy. Just jump. <laughs> Good call, Pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. It's not Kuno. It's Kuno S. Kuno S is by far the worst of the two. Kuno has no problem being near you, but the other hides behind the fence, afraid for her life, like she's done something, something very bad. She came up with that psychopathic scheme of screaming for help before. Kuno just wanted to talk to you about his name. Kuno S was the one who wound him up and directed him. Also, Kuno hasn't stopped talking to you even enjoys it from time to time. 
When you talk to the other one, it's like talking to a cornered animal. She only hisses and says murder was the case that they gave her. All in all, Kuno respects madness. You cannot hope to outdo her on that front. <laughs> you must win yourself a few minutes with him alone. Fuck you whispering about. He's whispering too. He's going with it. But watch what happens. Fuck you f whispering about. If Kuno wants to whisper, he's gonna fucking whisper, okay? Let's whisper, pig. <laughs> this is it. You've got him. But be careful. You can still fuck this up. Don't make Kuno look bad in this. Crazy? You don't know the half of it. She's not crazy. She's insane. Dangerous. She smoked a man. She's done people in. Probably even pigs. Stop talking to him! Kuno, I'm fucking warning you! You're gonna get us into shit! She understands what you're trying to do. Yo, see! Did Kuno not tell you? Kuno told you! Kuno talks to whoever he wants! Talk, pig. Kuno's got it under control. You did it. They're separated. He's even turned his back to her, so she can't read his lips. Kuno means she killed someone. That's right. She's a killer. Like, actually a killer. Are you getting this? You think I'm fucking telling you a joke here? How hard do you think it is to kill a fat ass? Sweet talk him, then knife him. She's probably killed a pig too. I mean, I'm pretty sure she has. Forget Kuno said that. Kuno was just shitting. Kuno was just running his mouth. Kuno's stupid like that. The creature peers at you both from over the fence. There is something searching in her eyes. Fuck knows. She says it's the song of her people or some shit. Crazy people. The fucking Nakis. I don't know. It's Suruese. The Suru are an indigenous ethnic minority in the social democratic powerhouse Vasa on the tundra and tiger covered Isola of Katla. Far, far away from here. As far as possible. Really? You mean evil little red-haired people like her? Yes, they do. The Suruese have that ginger gene. Suruese? Like that man from Shermdol shit? She could be. She could be that Shermdol shit. Revelshot does have a small Suruese community. Or she climbed into a yakberry crate and was shipped <laughs> over accidentally. Yeah, she's psycho. None of that kiddie psycho. Capen and shit. She does the real deal. Snuff radio shit. Believe me, pig, you don't want to know. Yeah, she would have liked to fuck him up, but she didn't. Kuno wasn't around, and C was with Kuno. Look, Kuno's gonna put you at ease. We didn't do it. He speaks the truth, my liege. <laughs> Fuck no, she's not me sister. She's just a stray who got in, like a mad dog or some shit. Yeah, she was just there. What was that, Kuno? She was in the hallway, dripping wet, by the fucking shoe rack, in the dark. Kuno's got no fucking idea. Her hair was all wet. I think she pissed on the floor too. She was there for three days, in the corner, every time Kuno went out. I don't know. 
someone left the door open. Kuno comes home and she's sleeping under the desk, under a pile of clothes, like a dog. Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit, doesn't even see her there, or thinks it's fucking Kuno. Shit's all on Kuno. Kuno, Kuno S, two of a kind. Because she fucking looks like Kuno. No one knows her name. Kuno told you this shit was psycho killer. How's Kuno dealing? Kuno's dealing just fine. He doesn't need you fucking with any of it. C doesn't either. Kuno's got this shit under control. Listen, listen, C is Kuno's go-to, Kuno's protecting her, you fuck with C, you fuck with Kuno, you threaten her, you threaten to take her away. This is what it all comes down to, he needs you to take him seriously now. I am going to kill you, I'll run when you put the cuffs on her, sneak up on you later and fuck you up, do you understand? All right, now we can do business. Yeah, what do you want? Kuno can hook you up with. Oh, don't hook him up with shit, Kuno. See, relax. He respects the Kuno. Kuno made him respect the Kuno. You respect the Kuno, you get all kinds of shit. <laughs> Kuno's gonna get you hooked on illegal narcotics if you run a little errand for the Kuno. Get you hooked, pig. Get his hook in you. Then Kuno gonna get you hooking for more. Cash in big style, pig cooker. That's right, Kuno is a candy store for pigs now. Get ready to be rewarded. <laughs> oh, I can finally level up. Okay, shoot. Uh, more endurance, physical instrument. Oh, let's just do it. Endurance or something like that. So I'm feeling I'm gonna get my ass beat at some point. Kuno gets it from his dad. Kuno and his dad are major suppliers. That's where Kuno gets his lightning on. Problem is, Kuno and his dad had a little falling out. Now junkies clawing at Kuno's door. Streets going mad. Kuno's got to throw his dirty popo man at it. Dirty popo man is you. In there is Kuno's violent dad on steroids. Kuno's dad does steroids and speed. If you can take him, you can have half of the speed. Kuno's dad is a fucking monster. He's the most violent man in Revishol. He doesn't give a shit about a single thing. He drinks too. Are you sure you can take on the most violent man in Revishol? <laughs> in your condition? Like half? A baggy, but like in this vial. That's half a gram. Sir. Yeah, half a G. Want it or not? Fuck you talking about half a G? This shit is giant grade A shit. So clean you can barely see it. You can barely see it because there's barely any. <laughs> okay, Kuno's listening. Sure, whatever. If you survive, make sure to bring that shit back to Kuno. Kuno's almost out. 
You wouldn't like the Kuno when he's out. Kuno's violent dad's got Kuno's key. So you need to fuck your way in there. Go to the pier side. Bang on the door till the cleaning gimp lets you in. That's how Kuno does it. Hmm. Then you go to room 12 and kick down the door. Police violence style. That's what Kuno does. And then it's action time. You're locked in the room with violent fuckhead. That's it. Next time Kuno sees you, you better have his shit. What the hell are you signing us up for here? Okay then. Yeah, seriously, because I don't want my dude to freaking use it. The fuck do you want with it? Good call, Pigmeister. Kuno does. Or is my guy gonna bark his guts up again? There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The boy. Yeah, I'm gonna up my endurance next just to check this freaking body. Should I have maybe up to right now? Maybe? I don't know. You see a set of tire tracks in the brown slush that covers the plaza mosaic. Cop habit. You look at everything. This isn't case related, you think. Hard to say. The tire tracks were left here by an unknown event that took place some days ago. It's a message written in the language of burnt rubber. So. Uh, how am I doing? I'm doing good. Finally off the road for a couple days. Um, see, it is Tuesday, so actually tomorrow afternoon I hop on the bus again. But uh, yeah, no, I'm doing all right. Enjoying a couple days off. Can't wait for this Sunday when I actually have like a full week off. Um, so, but things are going good. So, just playing some Disco Elysium, trying to. Figure stuff out. Let's see. Crashed. Burst. Turned away. Some of that rubber stuck to the tiles right in front of the whirling in rags. This is point A. The driver started there and then accelerated straight into the fence, left a hole big enough for the Franco Nigerian cavalry, according to the cafeteria manager. Why that pang of guilt again? So was it my dude? The driver proceeded to back out of the yard, barely stopping before hitting the adjacent building. Before heading south, must have been in a hurry. You are correct. This is a rather motor carriage friendly city. Somehow that makes you feel scared. You don't know why. I'm not sure. There are plenty of traffic accidents waiting to happen in Martinez. With the jam right here on the roundabout, I would keep them separate. You could follow the track south. There seems to be a canal there. See where they went, if you game. find the time. Game is super giant. Game has a super giant game. Yeah, this game is so weird and wacky. Like, it goes for being serious, and then, like, your tie starts talking to you and telling you to do messed up stuff. And then you pass out, and, like, your limbic system starts talking to you, and it's 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 crazy, man. But, and you're trying to solve a murder, so. <laughs> I'm pretty sure my guy got drunk and crashed into the fence, and then probably... Probably crashed or crashed the car into the river or something.
Lovecraftian kind of strange? No, man, it's it's not Lovecraftian. It's like it's like you roll for stuff, kind of like D and D, except I think it's like two D sixes, but you don't ever see the rolls. But it's like like it's just, it's just crazy. Like like one of my stats, like you have an intellect, psyche, physique, and motorings, and you actually don't necessarily want to raise a stat to its max. Like these are the base stats; and these don't really change, but your other skills. Uh, pair off them and like it tells you like here let's do uh, like Inland Empire like oops uh, read the description here like Inland Empire is the unfiltered wall spring of imagination emotion foreboding it enables you to grope your way through invisible dimensions of reality getting insight into that which sight can't see what's really going on with these enigmatic riddles mean for the world fate so you know that's kind of like the general I think it's like at high levels input Inland Empire animates the inanimate you'll have conversations with clothing Conversations that may change the course of the investigation if you're not thrown in the loony bin first. With Lil in the Empire, however, you'll be void of imagination and character. How then will you shape the cosmos? Yeah, so like if stats are like too high, sometimes like you get way into your own head if it's like a mental stat. Um, like if you max out your drama. It's like drama may render you an insufferable thespian, one prone to hysterics and bouts of paranoia. Or to know the world is a stage is to know that truth is vanity. However, with low drama, you cannot lie. You're starting to when others lie. A cop who can't do either is a cop who's soon going to be lying six feet under. So, like I said, I gave my guy like a high psyche so you could like, you know, have empathy and stuff with people. But I don't know if I'm going to max out any of his stats if I can max it out. Just because I think my guy would be like way too empathetic in connecting with stuff. At the same time, his physique and motorics are kind of crappy. So, like... Uh, my guy keeps throwing up because he can't investigate a dead body because <laughs> the smell is too bad. Um, stuff like that. Or like if I got into a fight, I'd probably get my ass kicked because I don't have good hand-eye coordination or and my endurance is low and my physical instrument is low. Um, and I'm trying to get my guy off of drugs, but like if, I, if my guy were to start taking drugs, like he, he would... Uh, easily get addicted because his electrochemistry is really low. So, yeah, it's crazy. Yes? Hello? Me? No one. I'm just the working class woman. She doesn't really want to be disturbed that much. If she's such a working class woman, why isn't she working? Not all the time. Right now I'm browsing books. Even a working class woman needs something to read. Uh, it hasn't been super frustrating per se. Like, there's always been options. But, because it's just the world is so interesting. So, like, you can get in these conversations with people. And you really can't, like, I like to select, you know, all the dialogue options I can. But at times I have to be careful because I'm like, yeah, if I select the wrong thing, like, this person's going to get mad at me. Tell me to F off. Or... You know, I might not be able to come back to this conversation thing, so you just kind of have to always keep that in mind. Let's see. It is. I know you are. <laughs> what with? My husband? No, he's not. <laughs> I don't know. At home now? Out drinking with his friends? Working? Where is this going, officer? Yes, but... I don't really need to know where my husband is. Not all the time. No. Why are we still talking about this? I haven't lost my husband. She has, though. The husband is totally lost. You should tell her that it's okay. Hush, <laughs> baby. What? Who said anything about Shane? Stop talking down to me. 
My husband is not missing. But he is. You can feel it. Or maybe it's something else then. See, like, again, I'm gonna f kind of follow this line of questioning, but I don't know if my guy's actually onto something, or if I'm reading too much into something right now. No, absolutely not. Are you a policeman or a nanny? They are not missing, sir. You know where they are. They're at home. Smoking. Giving the ladder of vices a chance. What if something horrible has happened? What if they're dead? That's the bad vibe you got before. What? That's just... My daughters are perfectly fine. They're with their friends down in Jamrock. There's nothing to worry about. She's getting upset. Her voice has risen as she tries to convince herself that her daughters are safe. They're almost grown up now anyway. They're past the age they need me protecting them from everything now. Oh my god. My youngest girl, Jolie, is just shy of 16. Jenny, she is turning 18 next month. But we shouldn't even be talking about them. Why do you need to know this? Haven't I repeatedly told you that they're not missing? That they're in Jamrock, safe and well, at some stupid party? There is no investigation here. <laughs> oh I can tell you that. Uh, let's try this one up. I don't mean to disrespect, sir, but you are being a bit of a cockatoo here. For what it's worth, I agree. But cockatoos can't be stopped when they get ladies. It's better to indulge him at this point. Nothing. Go read up on them if you're so interested. There's a great book in the bookstore. Maybe you should. What if the cockatoo is your astral captain? Or your heraldic bird. Uh. Wonderful. The store is open. Her hands move over the book covers. The tips of her fingers look rough, stained with yellow. It seems like she has spent a lot of time at work, smoking. Oh, trip. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the woman before you nods and returns to her reading. See, I think this actually did add as a task. Yep. Find your heraldic bird. Press one to your bit of cockney. What if it's true? The group of cockney. It's like I could do this for experience at the same time. Um, you know, I don't. I kind of think I have a timetable. I don't know what my timetable is, but you know, I kind of have a timetable, so. Streets will flow red once more. A great torrent rushing down Rue de Esperance. You wait and see. The streets will not flow red with anything. Who are you? I'm Cindy the fucking Skull. What else do you want to know? Date of birth, blood type, the last time I was tested for Hep C. Go where? Accosting a minor? Listen to your partner, pig man. Keep your grubby hooves off little old ladies. 
hands right there too. She puts the brush aside. She's grown frustrated with her work and welcomes the opportunity to challenge authority in other ways. The lieutenant furrows his brow at another one of your eccentricisms. I don't know if it should have actually read that because it's not the same person before it made us the book. Dark things appear. Hatred, disgust. It's difficult to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. The woman on the boat does not notice her staring. That Ozon her. Someone's got to keep an eye on her. Ozon is an archipelago, two days travel away from Rivershock. Its moneyed residents used to posh restaurants and upscale boutiques rarely have reason to visit Martinez. Probably the Wild Pines rep. We should talk to her. She's a professional negotiator, though. I have the feeling she will be very cooperative while telling us nothing. You should take the lead. Ask her unexpected questions, you know? Do your thing. Don't be afraid to get a bit wacky. Throwing her off is our best bet. Good idea, piggies. Run along now. Fuck her shit up good. Impound that boat while you're at it. I'd like to watch her swim back to us on. Can't you tell? I'm painting a beautiful mural, an aereo graffitio visible from low orbit. I haven't really started it yet. I'm waiting for the right words. Have you ever tried your hand at graffitio? When faced with a blank wall, most people write unimaginative stuff, like pigs go home and Mono is here. We rarely see pigs round here, though. Just union cats. And my name's not Mona, so... She wants it to be something true. And total. This place is severely lacking in havoc. Not even the occasional trash can fire to break up the tedium. I thought I'd mix it up. You know, summon the forces of crime and social chaos with a wall-sized invitation. I guess I'm gonna have an opinion on it. Yeah? Uh... <laughs> sure, why not? Could you say I don't have an opinion, it's the only truth, why not? Thanks! I'm sure the inspiration will come to me now that I have an official RCM stamp of approval. You've listened. Her desire to deface the building. <laughs> I ain't no snitch, Pigstein. Go forth and forage in someone else's shit. No shortage of squealers in these parts. Actually, there is a shortage of people who talk to us in a normal, calm, informative manner. We weren't put on this earth to make your life pleasant, fucko. Watch your back, ungulate. You've got eyes on you. Interesting. Alright, uh, let's look at this shirt I just picked up. What's this? Blue signal naming code. Plus one suggestion. Hi, right, Captain. Minus one half light of serial boys. Plus one suggestion. Code suits everyone, including you. If you ever find yourself bat battling winds at the helm of a ship, then the code safe fabric has got your back. Even if the monster comes down. So let's see. Pressure investigators, short, or shoot now, ask question later, cop surprise haters. Fight or flight response, ah, uh, since we should turn, check a cup of fear into your heart, purge Jack before it's too late to erect again, if you to frighten others' aggression, then once you squeeze every less out. So, everyone's drops the news. This is the 
A sturdy metal door guards the southwest entrance to the apartment building. It's locked. Good morning, officers. I'm Joyce. Joyce L. Messier. I represent the board of Wild Pines, the owners of the harbor. You gentlemen must be from the RCM. Hmm. Beaton, my maiden name. Nothing, honestly. I've said it to every drunk in town, and you're the first one who's responded. to see you here she is unfazed by your rudeness probably chucking it up to local custom I was dispatched to handle a strike not a lynching anything I can do to assist the RCM in this matter I will gladly that is good to hear madame my colleague will take the lead on this interview I should let you know that he is recovering from an unusual medical episode very unusual but I can assure you of his ultimate competency. How interesting. I wish you a swift recovery. In the meanwhile, you have my full cooperation, and the full cooperation of the Wild Pines group. It's hard to get a read on her precise disposition, but she appears helpful. Why, yes I am. Of course there are. We're on an archipelago. How else are you supposed to get around? <laughs> there is a pinch of defensiveness in her voice, but it is playful. You're on a boat. <laughs> yes, we are. We are on Le Caillou. Technically, the neighboring Ozone and Fas Alamea island groups are archipelagos, while Le Caillou, by contrast, is a single fertile landmass. The fourth largest island in the world. It is not an archipelago. Okay, if you want to get technical. The point is, we're all on islands here, and sail is still the most expedient way to get from one island to another. Especially when you're in a hurry to resolve a strike. I haven't seen anyone else drive a souped up Kupri Kenema motor carriage either. Mm. She's been watching us. Actually, that motor carriage has been specially issued to serve as a patrol and pursuit vehicle. It's for crossing long distances in the Greater Ravachol Industrial Harbor. It's not a toy. Neither is this. A toy, I mean. It's a machine for crossing long distances in the Bay of Ravachol, between the city and the islands. The boat? No. It is called Cordelati 19, because that's the type of sloop it is. The word, it feels strange. Such a beautiful boat deserves a proper name. Okay. 
How about Cordel HE19? Why? Because it was manufactured in Revishal East by a company called Cordel HE, and its hull is 19 paces long. Sure, let's try how about Dolores. Why Dolores? Hmm. Well, it means nothing to me. I think I'll stick with the factory name. But thank you for the suggestion. It's a pleasure craft. A 19 pacer. It also happens to be rated for Category 1 racing. Though these days I mainly use it for business. My sloop? I like it a lot. It's the eel's hips, baby. I'm enjoying this part of the interview. It has so little to do with the murder we're investigating. <laughs> I really do, the lieutenant thinks. Is she thrown off yet? He's looking at the woman, assessing her. Officer, I assure you I'm a highly qualified pleasure craft operator. The crowns of her teeth are porcelain, white as the boat's hull as she smiles. Her nonchalance might be related to something called the Wayfarer Act. A law that says she doesn't need a license. Sly Fox, you're not aggressive enough to harass her further on this. Good. What we do? I'm afraid I don't speak for Wild Pines as a whole. It, it's a giant undertaking. The Pines' core competency is logistics. Container shipping, freight, that sort of thing. See those airships there, blinking? Those are the shipping side of things, and that is the terminal. Another subdivision deals with energy, oil and gas exploration, offshore platforms. The Wild Pines group is one of the original Revisholian Indo-tribes. Companies awarded royal monopolies by the king, the suzerain himself, centuries ago. The king is long gone, but several of the Indo-tribes remain. Son Baptiste, L-U-M, an unknown entity known as Brightest Star. Why, thank you. I'm not at liberty to discuss the company balance sheet, but I can tell you that last year, the company booked more than 20 billion real in revenue. And to think, there are years when the group books losses in the billions. Warpines employ 72,000 people, all of whom have families that depend on their salaries. It is a tremendous responsibility. They started as an exploration and cargo fleet conducting trade between the Samaran and Insulindian Easterlers 250 years ago, when pine ships explored the South Seminese and charted Lormantang on behalf of the suzerain. Centuries of care, deliberation, and madness have gone into this endeavor. Vessels pass through the great unrest to re-emerge with apricots in tow. The logic of the system is totalizing. It's taken everything from its employees to build it. You know more than you let on. Certainly it helped, but most of the original Indo tribes have failed or been absorbed. To survive, Wild Pines had to grow and adapt. No suzerain did that. You mean aside from being the terminal's legal owners, who are responsible for moving 8% of the world's cargo? We built this district. All the best parts of it. Rue de saint Gislain, with its bastions, the plazas Meteor and Mosaic, even some of the old street lamps have been put back thanks to the investments from the WP. 
Before Martinez was swallowed by the industrial harbour, even before it was part of Revachol, long before Terminal B was erected here, the Pines built it as a resort for its Revacholian employees. A company getaway, for a weekend or a summer holiday. Then came the revolution. But that's another matter. I'm here to make sure the Pines can fulfill their responsibilities to the place they built. With your help, hopefully, says her warm tone. Everything. Right up to, but not including, trade secrets. First, you'd have to repeal the Emergencies Act of Trade and Elements. That gives me the right to silence. It's quite the octopus. <laughs> Good luck is only kept in place by the vested interests of half the civilized world, including your own. What the man means is that the Emergencies Act and the RCM both get their authority from the coalition government. You'd be shooting yourself in the foot, in other words. <laughs> Leave it alone. But I am derailing us. You wanted to know about the strike. I'm so gonna First, you'd have to repeat. Why? By throwing off half a century of foreign domination under the coalition. Unfortunately for you, the coalition also leases you the right to police West Revachol. You'd be shooting your. Okay. But I am derailing us. You wanted to know about the strike. What's your role on this? I believe the official title is Senior Labor Negotiator. In practice, I'm a grocery clerk. I relay the union's demands to Wild Pines and return with Wild Pines' counteroffer. And how are the talks going? They're not. That's the problem. The union stopped all negotiations a week ago, after that awful lynching took place. Now they won't even let me into the harbor. There's a 2 meter 20 racist behemoth blocking the gates. What can I say? The Union employs a giant covered in tattoos. A racist giant. I guess that's part of their big tent organization now. Let's say I was not making the kind of progress I'd hoped for when I first arrived. And when did you first arrive? I arrived three weeks ago. Yes, in the middle of February. The bay was still partially frozen then. I prefer to do these things on site, like the RCM. But the strike began in December. I wasn't the original negotiator here. I took over after Mr. Gaumont hit a wall with Mr. Clare, the union boss. Mr. Clare refused to speak with Gaumont despite concessions he'd granted the union in prior negotiations. This isn't the first time the union has gone on strike? Heavens no. There have been two prior strikes. Both times the union won significant concessions, including overtime pay and a medical plan. This time their demands are more, I guess you could say, aggressive. Mr. Clare told him to... How did he put it? Fuck off, midget. Gaumont is short of stature, you see. Keep in mind, this is a negotiator Mr. Clare has worked with before, and who was more than fair with him and the Union. There are leaflets everywhere, and banners. What did they say again? Oh yes, every worker, a member of the board. Most of the workers probably don't know what that means. In its defense, another said, demand democracy. Pretty tame stuff compared to every worker, a member of the board. Fortunately, they explained it. Every time the Wild Pines group makes a decision about anything, it needs the signature of each of the 2,200 workers in its Martinez terminal. Just so you understand, this is but one of 22 terminals owned by Wild Pines, essentially, not only are they kings of the company, they are also kings of the 72,000 employees of Wild Pines Group. <laughs> They're having a blast. But how can they afford it? 
After four months, my assumption was they would prefer a more practical solution. I'm not sure. Naturally, I assume that was just their opening position. A hard-nosed tactic with a side of mockery. But there's been no follow-up, just the same nonsensical slogan repeated over and over again. And now, people are getting lynched, I hear. Behind the whirling in rags. A disastrous situation if there ever was one. Excuse me, from whom did you hear about this lynching? I first heard it from the boyer at the gates. The one whose very name advertises his aversion to work. I think he said it was, call me manana. This checks out. The scabs? You mean the huddled masses of Jamrock come to plead for work where the Union refuses to? If they were organized by Wild Pines or its affiliates, then it would be a company secret. I could not share it with you. Not right now, at least. It's implied. She's open to discussing this matter with you at a later occasion. Everard Clare is a man of the utmost integrity. If you can say one thing about him, it's that he always puts the interests of the workers first. Of course not. Everard is fantastically corrupt. I imagine he has a thick, viscous goo where you and I have blood. He is the most corrupt individual I have ever seen, and I deal with men like him for a living. If there is anyone more venal, more irredeemably nepotistic, then it's his twin brother, Edgar. Twins? Yes. Edgar looks exactly like his brother, except for that lazy eye. He also talks exactly like Everard does, and when one's term as foreman is up, the other takes over. It's how they circumvent the term limits, you see, with a funny little switcheroo. While in office, they've embezzled God knows how much of their workers' dues. The Daybarders Union was once a perfectly normal institution. Twenty years ago, anyway. It must not have been easy to establish under the Emergency Act. But they did it. I can respect that. Organized labor at its best, as they say. Then something happened in the local chapter elections. The Brothers Clare came and transformed it into a... How do you say... A mob. The Debardeurs are a crime syndicate. Sad as it may be, I suspect we'll be forced to cooperate with them. Refreshingly honest, officer. The company has tried appeasing in the past, but I'm afraid our concessions have only emboldened Everard and his brother. And your opinion, detective? If I may ask. I'm a curious and talkative person, you see. Would you say the Debardeurs union is... Sessions for the workers was good. At the same time, those guys are, like I said, draining their workers' dues, so. <sighs> of course, officer. I'm glad you asked. There was a woman, the previous forewoman of the Union. She disappeared. Disappeared? Yes. On the last day of the local chapter elections, her daughter phoned in and said she wasn't running anymore, or coming to work, ever. End of story. Downright haunting, if you ask me. The Wild Pines suspected foul play, but what could they do? It was a union matter. The point of the presentation is, these kinds of things happen around the Clares. Watch out when you're dealing with him. Thank you for your concern, ma'am. We'll be just fine. Of course. How else can I help? Quite a few things, I'm afraid. The information I'm to share with you includes sensitive trade secrets. For the sake of my employer, I have to ask for your names and badge numbers.
Of course, ma'am. We should have introduced ourselves. I am Lieutenant Kitsuragi from Precinct 57. Do I know? I don't even know my name and badge. And this is my colleague from Precinct 41. I'm afraid he doesn't have his badge at the moment. I hope mine will suffice. How curious. Why is that, Detective? Awkwardness washes over the conversation. The woman doesn't like this turn of events. <laughs> I see. So, are you saying you lost your badge during the course of this episode? <laughs> oh dear. Some kind of encephalopathic amnesia. I don't even know how to respond. I do believe you, naive as that may sound. I simply can't imagine what you gain by faking such a condition. As I said, ma'am, his technique may be very unconventional, but he is an officer of the RCM. Of course, I sympathize, but I'm afraid I simply can't share anything more until I've seen that badge. I gotta go find my badge. Hang on. She's a professional negotiator. She should be open to some sort of mutually beneficial arrangement. I mean, favors for favors. A dirty alliance of some sort. Consider this. Perhaps she has been planning it all along. That you convince yourself into colluding with her? Easy. Just offer her a favor. Like I said, nice and dirty. I will be frank with you. If I'm going to break protocol, I need to be able to justify it to my superiors. They're going to want to see something very tangible. You're in, but expect her to drive a hard bargain. Reports from inside Terminal B suggest it's a hub for the local drug trade. This is an open secret in Martinez. The Union controls the terminal, so it goes to reason. The company has tried looking into this matter before, to no avail. Perhaps someone with your authority and resources might turn over the right stones. Or you can recover your badge. Though if I may be blunt with you, it sounds like that may be a lost cause. Detective, a word in private before we continue. Hey. Psst. Psst. Hey, you. Oh, yes, you. Word on the street is, you're ready to start building communism again. What? You keep saying things like, down with the bourgeoisie, eat the rich, sodomize the landowners, no, I don't. impale all people who have more than 25 real in their pocket, literally murder all human beings regardless of their <laughs> political beliefs, that kind of stuff. Oh yes, the mass of ambivalence. Don't deny it. You're oh about to rip it off and reveal the monstrous seven-eyed lamb of global communism that would devour and masticate mankind. Oh my gosh. Everyone can see that. So tell me, do you have any questions before we fire up the big communism builder? Or do we get right down to it? Failure. It's about failure. Yes, abject failure. Total, irreversible defeat on all fronts. Absolutely vanquished, beaten, curb stomped and pissed on. Until you came along, you will reverse the fortune of the workers of the world. You alone, against every living thing, against every human alive. 800 trillion real in the hands of an impossibly well-organized ruling class. Towering city blocks of bankmen who have the ears of prime ministers. Million-headed armies of nations and the love of your own mother. Oh my gosh. You against the atom, 
the charm and the spin, where the whole world failed. Matter failed to bend to human will. Human will failed to get out of bed and tie its laces. You alone, single-handedly, will rebuild the dreams of the working class. You are the last communist. Oh now gosh. get to work, comrade. say that I'm beat up and broken down but at the same time uh, I don't think I'm going to start building communism <laughs> very well I guess no one will build communism then tell the working man it's over unless anyone has objections no objections it's mathematically impossible to achieve a classless society everyone knows this anyone anyone else there's no one there's yeah. one You should build communism, precisely because it's impossible. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what does this even mean? I don't know what this means. No, I don't feel like, man. But I think this is a good time to take a quick uh, 10 minute break. So get up, stretch, use the bathroom, grab a drink, whatever you need to do. See you back here in, uh, might be sooner than 10 minutes, but we'll shoot for 10 minutes. Then get back to it. Alright. BRB, enjoy your short rest.
Alrighty, and we're back. Didn't necessarily get me a new drink, but I still got a little of my old one here. And I got me some now cold re... I don't know what you'd call it. I reused the tea bag, so it's not really strong, but mostly just kind of sweetened water with some tea taste to it. But it's still kind of tasty. Also, if anybody's Oh, I thought about trying Trader Joe's, the peas and carrots, uh, um, not actual peas and carrots, but the peas and carrots, like, little treat. Those things are actually pretty good. We just had a few bites right now, anyways. Alright, uh, talk to my partner. This is not going quite as I hoped it would, detective. Honestly, I was expecting you to use your unorthodox technique to keep her off balance, and, you know, not volunteers to be her henchmen. I don't know how I would gone more off the rails than that. Unless I had said something about, like, you know, I don't know, when I answered a question. This woman is running circles around us. She might have known about your misplaced badge all along, or she's simply an adept improviser. Either way, we've played straight into her hands. He doesn't let it show, but there is a limit to how much the consequences of your unprofessional behavior can cost the investigation. Yes. Knowing this does not really change our position, however. I'm sure you will, detective. No, if there is reasonable suspicion, we must investigate. Otherwise, she could claim we are siding with the Union, or that we are on their take. We'd never hear the end of it. What I propose is, we ask her, then we investigate, briefly. But do not share the outcome of this investigation with her. We tell her it's done, and demand for her information on the lynching. Hmm. Oh, that would be fantastic, but do we have the time? The world is large, and your badge is 8 by 6 centimeters. <laughs> the situation might have changed drastically by the time you locate it. Time is of the essence. You could request a new one from your station, but that would literally take months. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? It's quite straightforward. Someone is using Terminal B to smuggle raw ingredients from the Samaran Isola into Revachol, with the Union's blessing. Wild Pines has suspected it for years. Ingredients for what, man? Meth and dextroamphetamine, GBL and various synthetic psychedelics. Honestly, it might be quicker to say what you can't make from the stuff. Yes, after they clear the terminal, we lose track. The actual production is taking place at various sites in and around Jamrock Quarter, north of here. Wild Pine seems to be well apprised of the local drug trade, man. Do you mean to say the Union also produces the product? Sells drugs, I mean? We're in logistics. It's our business to know. And no. As far as the company knows, the Union does not produce it. They transport the ingredients for a cut. Yes, but you won't get anything out of Evrat and the Dock Workers Union. Still, every chain has its weak link. The handoff. The motor lorries at the roundabout. Precisely. Someone needs to move the ingredients from the harbor into the city. Once they reach Jamrock, they're distributed to a network of local manufacturers well beyond our grasp. But in transit, they are vulnerable. Perhaps you've noticed that a number of lorries are tangled in a traffic jam at the roundabout just now. Interview the drivers who are still hanging about. One of them might be waiting for a crucial shipment. I'll be explicit. If you find this driver, 
I will share company secrets with you. No. We asked East Motor Track to raise the drawbridge. The road company is a partner of one of our subsidiaries. However, this is a limited time opportunity. Once the complaint has been processed by the Trade Committee, they'll have no choice but to lower the drawbridge, and the operation will continue. Thousands of litres of raw ingredients will pour onto the streets of Revachol. Not the east across the river, but the west. The vulnerable. The weary. Well... At least this solves one mystery. What is that, Lieutenant? Why I had to call East Motor Track and beg them to open a drawbridge for me. It wonder since I first drove in on my motor carriage. I am sorry for the inconvenience, Lieutenant Kisaragi, but we need them trapped here. This is a unique opportunity. I'm sure you understand. We did. On more than one occasion. Apparently, there's some sort of inter-precinct disagreement about whose jurisdiction this area falls under. We know the company has launched its own probe into the Union's alleged involvement. We also know it's come up empty. It's not just the RCM. No one's been able to find any hard evidence. Well, here's your chance, officers. How do you think they're financing this strike? There are thousands of unpaid dock workers going strong for the fourth month straight. There was a shakedown of local businesses preceding the strike. Many were squeezed to bankruptcy to fund it. With all due respect to these desert cacti, the contents of a few cash registers cannot provide for 2,000 men. The local businesses can scarcely provide for themselves. Precisely. Smuggled out of that very gate at night, most likely. Then loaded onto lorries and driven to Jamrock. You simply need to find one driver who will open up to you. It sounds like she tried looking into it herself. Though she's clearly not the type your typical lorry man would confide in. Oh, I wonder if that one guy needs to talk to you if I can make it. Yes. The two might even be connected. Or not. So, if you have evidence to the contrary, I'm eager to hear it. As eager as I am to share it, Lieutenant, once the job is done. Yes? According to my reports, there are at least three lorry drivers lingering near the roundabout. Hopefully one of them will know something. It may come to nothing, or it may just blow the case wide open. I can keep the drawbridge up for a few more days at least. You should have the time you need. In the meantime, let me know if there's any other way I may be of assistance. Of course, detective. Take care. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? This is a wall on the side of an apartment building. Huh. Okay, can we try it? I was like... You have no clue. It's just a wall. So many walls all over Martinez. Weather-worn, cracked, their paint peeling. Up on me. Come to slit my throat in my sleep. 
Logic error. She is not sleeping right now. <laughs> Pigs come to take me out. Trying to snuff me out. Don't get fucking clever with me, pig. You think you're so clever. <laughs> Trying to sneak up on me again. What's that? Is that a rope? Speed, feeling twitchy, Warner's bump break. Warner's speed with a couple of big ass holes inside. Looks like might have been used as a mask during an armed robbery. Jeez. <laughs> be another way into the building. Baldiness. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you guys heard that or not, but the sound in my headphones like went crazy. Oh my gosh, it like blew out. What the heck? Okay, good. Did do it again. That was that was scary. Hopefully it was just so me much and you for guys quiet that smoke. Too. see a young man on a balcony nursing a cigarette his eyes have been following you for a while not looking for any trouble officer it's quite the cold his shirt hangs a button on his frame there's no trouble i'm just speaking in a lowered voice he says so. I don't want to be seen talking to the gendarmerie, if that's okay. I just want to finish my cigarette. Don't let him go. This could be your witness. The balcony has a great view of the whole thing. Is it really that important? Like a nervous cat, he keeps stealing looks at the neighboring windows. All right, but make it quick. Once I finish this cigarette, I have to run. I'd even go so far as to say that the view is a little too good, my dear gendarme. Do you have an estimate of when the body will be taken away? We will remove the body as soon as possible. Now tell us, where were you last Sunday? Oh. You already asked me that, didn't you? Wait, is someone else investigating the lynching? No, not you. Some more muscular type. And when did you speak to this more muscular gentleman? Last week? I don't know. Look. Old better cheers to house plants let us in. You didn't answer the question. What were you doing last Sunday? <sighs> I had a friend over. It was my Sunday friend. He doesn't reply, gesturing no with his cigarette. In the neighboring windows, you can see faint reflections of his silhouette, all 
from different angles. I'm trying to read stuff. My name? My name is Martin Martinez. Martin Martinez? Good local name. Let's go with that. <laughs> Help you? No, sorry, gendarme. I have to run. No. We won't. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really need to get going. This isn't the place or time for questions. Who knows who might be watching from the distance, hidden behind the curtains? For a moment, the man on the balcony seems almost vulnerable. Something moves in the depths of his feline eyes, compassion, and a hint of understanding. I am sorry, but I really don't have the information you're looking for. But, hold on, what's that? For a split second, his hand lingers, as though gesturing towards a stone placed right next to the front door. It's a sign. Good luck with the investigation. Interessante. He's gone. No point in running. Tenements like these often have multiple exits. If he doesn't want to talk to us, then he'll know how to hide himself. He could be a witness. Him or his Sunday friend. Either way, we need to look into that muscular type who's asking about our case. He did leave us a sign. Did you see that? He wanted to draw our attention to that stone right over there. If we find a way inside the building, we can ask around for his apartment. A stone, like any other, lying in a whirl of sleet and mud. Maybe there's something under it. There's a key beneath it, rusty from the dirt. This must be for the front door. Pity doesn't have the apartment number on it. This building has many apartments and a man can be in any of them. We'll just have to go in and see. A smoker on the balcony. Don't want to go up there, man. I keep finding more and more leads. waiting now what's in there in that dark sarcophagus the dark sarcophagus yes right. yes how was it <sighs> a charnel house and failed business enterprise is leeching life energy from this bookstore honestly it doesn't let me see they're just heaps of garbage so much let the sunshine I knew it. Oh, such horrors that have been thrust upon us. But what else did you find? Did anything survive? No, of course not. Have you located the entity? <laughs> A novelty dice maker? Well, spit it out. Why does she need the dice? 
for some kind of sorcery. Sometimes they use the ankle bones of sheep. I don't understand. If it's not her, then where is the source of the doom? How did she explain the curse? The narrative she's built herself, it does need tearing down. Just don't say you don't have any answer yet. The uncertainty is killing her. To hell with it. Perchance you ought to just lie, sire. You've come this far. You know how to end it. There is an entity behind the entity. Order presence, yes. A great dark relief washes over her. I've heard of these triactors. In certain occult literature, that's too dark to dwell on for too long, and definitely not in the presence of my daughter. I understand everything, sir. Thank you for your descending into the maelstrom. I will keep fort up here, strengthen the wards, do my best. And if you happen upon the third entity in your travels, may the Lord be with you. Well, this has been absolutely educational. If we happen on the third presence in our travels, <laughs> we will certainly come back to tell you. Yes, the venture continues in other waters, darker waters. <laughs> Should we get out of here before the vortex collapses? A book about cockatoos? There should be one upstairs, right next to the shelf of biographies. <laughs> For more books. Shelves full of biographies of famous people, whoever they are. Browsing through all the books with all them, suddenly a particularly odd title catches your eye. It reads High Speed Love. The tragic true love story of Jacob Irv and Alfie Delatraz by one Cecilia Averbrook. High Speed Love chronicles the romance between two of the finest tip-top tournay racers in history. One of them is the madcap driver, Jacob Irv. His blonde mane graces the cover. Next to Irv's life story, you see a slim biography of an Occidental rock star called The Anti-Star. He's famous for shooting morphine into one of his eyeballs and cocaine into the other. Next to that, Rivasholian radio personality Guillaume Bevy stands in front of a rundown drug den. He's a permanent fixture on Channel 8, reporting on real-life crime 
and ruining cops' days. I really must insist you buy one of the books. Reading them is not for free. Do still browse, though, but not too long. She understands she has erred against the customer and immediately corrects course. I'm sorry, I did not mean to rush you. You are browsing. Go ahead. Take your time. Time is commerce. A sulphur-crested cockatoo sits on the cover, its beak slightly open. It looks as if the bird is calling out the book title. From A to Zurich, a guide to a well-behaved cockatoo. Turns out that there are so many different cockatoo species, and they all have <laughs> behavioural problems. It's a must-have if you own a cockatoo. I've heard they're quite capricious. I should save my money. I come back to this. King class drunk. You know what this means, right? <clears throat> Cracked it. All in a good day's work. <laughs> what do you mean, what did I crack? Look at how working class that drunk is. Yes, and you found him. Now go and tell the working class woman. Protect and serve, recruit. Didn't she repeatedly tell you her husband isn't missing though? But he is missing. You heard her. The worry in her voice. <laughs> Do marriages make any sense? Does honor. You're not a filthy philosopher. You're an officer of law. It's time to ace this case and not brood over your reputation. We can deal with the perception management later. There's no need for champagne when there's honor, recruit. Go and tell the working class woman what you found right now. Uh, sure. I already told you, my husband isn't missing. And I specifically added that I didn't need to know where he was. Very well then, where is he? <laughs> was at the bottom of his Excuse me? There's something else hiding in her voice, though. A trace of worry. Right, cause working class women come with alcoholic husbands. You know what? You were right. I do have an alcoholic husband. Although not that one. I did, and he is. He's also an alcoholic. No, he's not. Or maybe he is, I don't know. He's probably in the park, or in Shamrock somewhere. Drinking with his friends. I 
I looked at the solution. Oh. Real breakthrough in here, okay. Maybe after I get done with this, maybe I'll have to breakthrough. I haven't seen him for... Well, to hell with him! There. She's worried now. She sighs, but you can detect a slight hint of gratitude and relief from her face. All right, go ahead. Do you have any questions? Honestly, not that different from you. <laughs> That's one way to put it, yes. No offense. I'd also add he's a little bit chubby. <laughs> what else? He was wearing a dark brown leather jacket with a bright blue inner lining. Hmm. The lining is hand sewn. I made it myself. It's his cool jacket. God knows it's too cold to run around in this, but he refuses to change. I even tried throwing it away once, but he just dug it out of the bin. Can you believe it? Well, what can you do? I hope that at least that extra lining helps him keep warm at night. I wouldn't like him to catch cold. She's thinking about him out in the cold, in some park, or on the coast. And it's making her more and more worried. Yesterday morning, he went to the library. He went to retrieve my book, and he promised, he promised, he'd walk straight back home. Because we talked about this. We talked about not wandering off again. I, I don't know what to do. I honestly don't know what to do with his addiction. It just makes me feel weak. Gone for around 36 hours then. Damn. This is a missing person's case. She turns away from you in an attempt to recover. So you are going to look for him? She genuinely wants you to know. Don't make her ask. Thank you. Please do. Even though I'm sure he will return home by himself. I'm still sure of that. She tries to maintain a brave front. Even though her eyes reveal the opposite. I'm sure he will too. When he does, would you let Precinct 57, Kim Kitsuragi, know? I will, of course, officer. As I said, it's probably nothing. And the little guy gets smaller and smaller as you rise about the dollhouse world. You see him out in the snow, on the streets, in the shop in the corner, and finally, in a matchbox house, sitting by the window, white flowers in the windowsill, you can smell them from up here. It's awful, all white and white. Modern death, divorce, or something similar. All you can do is put more distance between you and him, make him small, and make him a Plus, from, from thought, 20% zoom out distance. Okay, all Modrix. Earning caps raised by one, huh? Oh. That's cool. So that means even though I'm at a two, I could actually raise my motorx even higher. Right? Is that what that means? Yeah, look at that. That's cool. Can do another one now, maybe? No, 
zoom out even more. Tuesday. Yeah, that's right, because it's still Tuesday. Everything's still cool here, officer. <laughs> no need to dress this one up. Just tell him what you want. Oh, okay. But why, officer? <laughs> ah, yes. Money is very important. Are you trying to ask for a bribe? If so, you're not doing a very good job. <laughs> Sorry, detective. <laughs> the shine on these sunglasses lasts a lifetime, officer. 100% guarantee. Rust in control panel. This panel usually closes the water lock, turning it into a bridge that lets you cross the canal. You pull the lever all the way up. Nothing happens. A spring brings the lever back to it. Wasn't there a sign of... Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. The cold de Mamadakwa? Sorry, I would never have guessed that you were that interested in ultrasonic sounds. Or birds, for that matter. That's fair. I just... It's been a long time since my Koldima Madakwa hunting days. Once knew a group of young musicians who decided they didn't want to play music anymore, and started looking for all kinds of interesting sounds instead. This was before, you know, lost touch with them after all of that. Cool or not, one of them was obsessed with recording the Koldima Madakwa, and he was one of those passionate people 
who know a lot about all kinds of strange things. So he got the rest of us to join in his search. We thought we did. We got together all these recordings of unusual sound patterns, compared them, <laughs> cut them up and combined them into the Symphonia called Imamadakwa. That really wasn't the point. After the Symphonia, we moved on to the sounds of office supplies or something like that. And I doubt any of us would have been any good at pushing papers. Unfortunately, I don't have any recordings from my old life. None at all. But I do have a tape with some ultrasonic sounds that might be what you're looking for. Do we really have time for this? This recording comes from down the coast. Wasn't looking to record anything specific. Just left a recording device there one morning. Keep in mind, I have to slow this one down enough to make sounds well over 200 kilohertz audible to the human ear. It will be... strange. As the hum grows louder, modulating but always unnaturally uncomfortably low, like it's coming not from the speakers, but also from inside your chest. Breathing is becoming difficult. Not good, not good. You're about to start suffocating. You have to stop this. There's a growing sense of dread. The sound is coming from inside you, but also surrounding you. It feels as though someone is standing just outside your range of vision and watching you, doing this to you. He nods to you, reassuringly, just as more diverse, higher-pitched sounds, some random, some appearing to form patterns, hit your eardrums. Seabirds, most likely, gulls and such. And skewers, but shh. A low range of sounds is easier to handle with a focal point. But still troubling. You are mesmerized by the sounds, but also feel nausea welling up as the motif continues, then begins to recede, dissolving in what must be the sound of water lapping at the bank. You know, now that I've listened to it on these new speakers, it's not the cold Imamadakwa. Wrong patterns, wrong photons. Probably some insect trying to sing higher than its predators can hear. Still, fascinating, aren't they? Early morning sounds. Sure thing. Sure, man. Still here, stuck in this damn jam, my man. What's up? Dang it. Ah, man. Me and narcotics go way back. Had some good times surfing the psychic waves of my own consciousness, you know? But those days are behind me. There are other addictions in my life now. Why the inquiry, my man? Just be straight with him. We have a credible lead, sir. Someone on this roundabout is waiting for a bell shipment from the harbor to load it on their lorry and drive it to Jamrock. Not me, ma'am. No way. I don't need any trouble. Shit's bad enough anyway. This jam's got folks up in arms and I'm afraid it's headed toward a conflagration. Gotta guard the stuff. Bosses don't look kindly on missing cargo. And it gives me time to work on my rhymes. Look, man, I try to stay away from the criminal underbelly of Revachol. I'm a guest here. You really need to find another man to probe with those questions. 
It's not a lie. It's something else. Impossible to say what at this point. But there's something in him. Some trepidation. Huh. I think I'll be trying someone on. Your best verse. You don't even have a bad verse in here. Just tumbleweed and liquor stains. Wait, no. What are you doing? That's brutal, man. But you know, time will... No, stop. He's already mortified. <laughs> That's, um... In the name of God, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, I get that, and it's cool, but... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I get it. These are your rhymes. They're from your life. Doesn't matter if they're robust, they're honest. So... Thanks, man. Yes. And I also thank you... for stopping. We have a drug investigation to return to. How about we do that? In his eyes, an our familiar longing, flecks of brown and gold. It's hard to say. His gaze wanders southwest, down the street that goes beyond the horizon. Excuse me. Man, I don't know what to say. Not much anyone can do. There's no helping in absence, you know? I miss my family. They're all I have. My wife, second kid on the way. Waiting all the way in Diora. And here I am stuck in this shit, so far from home. Diora of the Seven Seas. It's on the other end of Le Caillou, pretty much. On another island called Laurentide, off mainland. We've got a little place there. I can almost hear my kid laugh when it snows. What's it like? Good. And bad. An ache that brings you joy. I think of them a lot. I dream up these silly scenarios in great detail of living with them. It comforts me. <sighs> what about you, cop man? You missing someone? Is that what it is? This feeling? No. It's scarier than that. You're pursued by a hunter. Smelling of apricots and sorrow, and the past. I feel for you, my friend. It's bad enough to know who you miss. Missing like that doesn't feel like it has much of an upside. But, thanks for this. It's nice to talk to someone, and I know it wasn't easy to ask. I hope you find your way through your own troubles. A Stars Riker, one of the finest Zimsk made motor carriages ever. An oldie, but a goldie. Not many people outside of Grad, and Revachol West, too, it appears. A Stars Riker KK2, that's a classic model. Never thought I'd see another one repainted after what happened last time. No, 
only that the motor carriage is typically baby blue. The colors of Sigismund the Great, an ancient Zemsk ruler. His banners were famously zephyr and white. The colors of the stars Raiko. That, well, yes, exactly it, more or less. Except it was a crowd of them, tore him out of the vehicle and ran him over with his own tires. They said it was an honor killing, Husser style. The Jim's community protested the trial, flying the colors. 5,000 came to protest. Correction, 4,395. The fourth largest public protest of a criminal trial in Revachol. People we are paid to protect. Let's leave it at that. Four years for murder in reunion. The perps were remorseful. Their sorry knocked eight years off the sentence. That's the system. The prisons in the Greater Rivershall Industrial Harbor are already full. Prisoners are expensive to maintain. The longer the sentence, the larger the cost. I tried to avoid drawing far-gone conclusions like this before actually examining the body. But my initial guess is the two are unrelated. Is that so, officer? I'll take you at your word. Hmm. Yes, detective? You sure you're not Jimsk? <laughs> yes, you're sure you're not. Or if you are, it's only in that Revisholian way. Four to five percent maximum. If you want her attention, you may need to be more forceful. Where am I? Who are you? The smile on her face has disappeared, replaced by the weary aspect of a cornered beast. Oh, never mind. I remember now. I'm still stuck in that traffic jam in the 50s. Back in Mefka, during the time of the revolution, the side walls and cafes are filled with young people. I was on my way to see a new Boyadero picture starring Gabriel Buendero. Until you came along, that is. Someone was. <laughs> they are someone's memories, boy. What difference does it make if it's me or not? They're beautiful. That is all that matters. Beautiful and true. And they will win. They're coming for this, you know? All of this. She seems to derive some bitter pleasure from this strange thought. As if the past will one day wipe the present away, like a tidal wave approaching. This is Gabriel Buendero. A strikingly handsome man looks straight at you. His head crowned with a wide brim hat. His hair is dark as an oil slick, and his jaw 
the most perfectly chiseled thing you've ever seen. This man's got a hold over her. Even 50 years later, you can feel it. He was the biggest star of his day. Girls used to faint in the aisles of cinema whenever he came on the screen. And school boys used to memorize all of his lines. I wasn't dreaming. I was there, Loman. It was early spring, and the man behind the black sun had just come out. The posters were 20 meters tall. Everything was golden. While you, people, were tearing each other apart over your petty little revolution, in Mesk, it was a golden age. The Republic of Mesk is a massive confederation on the Isola of Muindi, the world's largest state by territory. It's a petro-state, a constitutional monarchy, and, as of recently, an outcast due to its tilt to the far right. Why not, Harife? It's not like I have anything better to do in this hellhole. There's something off about this woman. Tell her to show you the soles of her boots. Maybe she was at the hanging somehow. She's just a distracted old woman. We should maybe let her get back to her things. So he doesn't think she's a smuggler? You hear that, Loman? I don't think your partner likes you spending too much time with me. Nothing. I just don't think she's connected to anything. He doesn't want your frail mind caught up in something here. Something unconnected to the case. But connected to this woman tuning out like that. Oh, don't worry about me. I'm one of the best communers around. I drive roots, no one else will. Lomonosov's land, Udashnaya Zemlya, the Western Plain, the Transcatholia Magistral, you for one A, and the Stradas do mirror, all the good ones, the deep trenches, where the bluebirds fly. Irmao, I already am dust. Of course not. To truly understand the Boyadero, you need to listen to on the Western Plain. The Boyadero, Boya for short, is a cow herder from upstream Magritte, the great steppes of northern Mesk. He is a rugged individualist and explorer. It's an old ballad about a young girl who falls in love with a daring boyadero. He promises to marry her as soon as he returns from the western plain. Of course not. The boyadero returns from the western plain a changed man. One night, as he and his beloved are out walking along the river Madrid, she pleads with him to give up his riding and settle down. So the boy Adairo strangles his beloved and throws her body in the Magritte. Then he rides off, because the Western Plain is calling to him. <laughs> the most beautiful. A true boy Adairo needs a whole horizon to himself. He can be tied down by man or woman. His beloved was selfish. She didn't know what it meant to love a boyadero. What if to truly love a boyadero is to float lifeless downstream? Now what do you want with an old woman's boots, Harif? Pfft. 
Please? I think you should let me get back to Gabriel Buenguerro. You are not Gabriel. Gabriel doesn't say please. She's wearing sturdy worker's boots made of black leather. Buckles run across. The soul is also made of leather. Just before Gabriel, it was the coronation of Franco Negro. Now, there was a real man. Moreover, the boots were size 37. Tiny. There are too many discrepancies in all this. Another discrepancy, although not boot-related, is the coronation of His Innocence Franco Negro, which happened 500 years ago. It was, and then it was no more. And I was no longer holding my father's hand. He was no longer descending the stairs in Ryle. The crowd had gone silent. Perhaps it was another Herife who came and woke me up, looking at my boots, asking questions. Or perhaps it was one of the others in this carnival. I don't remember. As she says, carnival, she gestures to the empty square with the statue and the machines. I could have told you that from just looking at them, a size is 37. The feet of a little girl, they fit well on the pedals. Diamonds? Of course not. But wouldn't it be marvelous if I was? Whatever stupid things they put in the lorry, I imagine. I quit concerning myself with that a long time ago. Besides, I don't drive the lorry for the cargo, if you know what I mean. Of course it does. What did you expect? What do I need drugs for, low man? What I see, what I feel, the great adversary, no drugs can compare. Yes, there is a protagonist and an adversary. I am on the side of the adversary. There's no coming back from that hole. Those epithets are familiar somehow. The great adversary, the great unrest. Then what were you getting at? Why would I want to do that? Loman, what in the name of God are you talking about? Maybe, probably not. Makes no difference to me either way. Just this month, I made half of those trips from Saramirisa to Grad, on the U41A. What do you think they take from Saramirisa to Grad, Loman? No. Loman Diamonds. Easy. He's the skinny man who thinks he's a poet. Never trust a poet. Also, he's the only one I can see from here. That's correct. There is no visibility of any of the others. Diamonds are good for you, Loman. You should try them sometime. Make yourself pretty like Eva de Zoras. Where do you want me to go? This isn't so bad. I can listen to music or the seagulls. Look at all the colors and the features of this world. It's a good palette cleanser, this jamboree. Or I can just relax and let my mind carry me back where it will, to the great plains. I think we're done here, no? Yes, go. Enough jamboree. I need to get back to Mesky. Volumetric ship compressor. Officer shit has been observed at a pressure for 490 
five gigatons moles. These metallic hydrogen levels are shit to get this worth thought to exist only at the center of collapsing stars. Not a lot of visuals. It remains to be seen how long the shit sinker lasts. Try this thing again. There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Plus Emitting six. it is all it does now. As you breathe in, the odor comes over you. It's a smell of the mind telling you to run and your stomach to wring itself empty. With your hands at your sides and your eyes squinting, you stand in it. They do after seven days, yes. We are deep in decomposition here. The man before you is naked, but for a pair of underpants and enamel boots. His skin is greenish, marbled with decaying veins, and blotched by lividity. A fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. The cargo belt used to fasten him to the branch above appears industrial in strength. The material appears to be ceramic. Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them. Delicate and fragile, they feel alien to the world around you, out of place somehow. These are clearly not boots, they're armor. Possibly part of a larger set. Indeed. Technically speaking, these are sabatons, not boots. Oh, the lieutenant uses a memo technique, A6. That's not just any notebook. It's a classic. It's clearly some manner of super armor, or future armor. Super future armor? I'm useless. <laughs> Ceramic plate. Zirconium dioxide, most likely. This is where the make would be. Under the hill. Fair weather. Fair weather model T500VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. This is advanced stuff. Piece by piece. He's been out here for seven days. It would be odd if they didn't. We should keep a lookout for these species. The armor could yield information. This is one thing he might actually know. No, I think he had something precious underneath the clothes. They had to remove the jeans and shirt we found to get to it. And this kind of armor is often worn under fabrics. Nice. That makes sense. They usually hang them completely naked for that. La puta madre. The Mazda. The Besmertis and the like. This one still has his underpants. 
<laughs> fucking talking about underpants. It is. It's expensive. We've requested similar material for our tactical units for years now. The constabularies deemed it too costly. In that time, we've lost six men to semi-automatics. For a full set, about four years of wages. For the northwest region of Revachol, an officer's average yearly income is 5,500 real, unadjusted for rank. Not too much, yes. The lieutenant nods, wiping his finger on his sleeve. That's for us to find out. My initial report on the area suggests he was a security guard for the Harbour Company. But that's just hearsay. Just something I scraped together from my station. An area report on Martinez. I'm sure you did the same. He's not actually sure of that. He's just being tactful. I agree. This equipment is way beyond what a guard can afford. A small bell-like sound fills the air, like tapping on the side of a porcelain cup. The pry bar in your hand is itching for some action. It's anything but. This material is a kinetic redistributor. It spreads kinetic energy horizontally, from plate to plate, dissipating it entirely. See? Faint, organic lines cover the plates where they separate into smaller ones. These plates then divide into smaller plates until there are hundreds of them altogether. Like the scales of some ancient white monster, cracked and pearly. This feels dangerous. Are you sure? The sabatons dangle off the man's decaying form, ageless and synthetic. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. The hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow, hard-edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above, a sliding buckle ties the belt to the branch. This is a steel-reinforced cargo lashing belt, big brother of the regular cargo belt. It's used for tying cargo under six-rotor airships. Airlifting? I thought it was used on lorries for strapping cargo to them. The local harbor uses six rotors to shuffle containers around. I get the sense they use whatever was on hand without paying much attention to not incriminating themselves. Right now, everything seems to fit their confession. I was afraid it would be. Thin steel wiring, parallel strands. This makes getting him down more problematic than I had assumed. A noose is one of those things that's easier to use one way around. That ladder can't carry a grown man. I didn't see any splintering either, did you? I think they lassoed the branch, then pulled on the bell to close the buckle. Could be. The shape of the branch supports the theory. The cadaver hangs from the cargo belt, limbs limp and torso covered in ta An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. His corpse is marked by stars. Alcohol and heartbreak.
a map of the stars. I do see some similarity to astronomical charts. Great century Messinian, maybe. But this seems more particular. Customized somehow. As if someone left that most of the night sky, filtering it through personal choice. The principle of this filter remains unknown to you. The thought dissipates, and you feel as though you were only half right. So am I. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminium from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears. Some sort of camera. A Trigat Sunshine. Mini. Trigat is the world's leading manufacturer of intercommunication devices, primarily projectors. The camera before you looks familiar somehow. Shit, Kuno! What the fuck is that? An instant color camera. This is the first time he openly acknowledges the kid's existence. I have only two ampoules, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. A sound, a shrill flash, followed by the breaking of a small ampoule of glass. You see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper, rolling out. In case we need it. Yes, it is pretty cool, isn't it? It contains insight to the victim's person. By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter. To us. Someone should decipher it. We'll need to show it around. Sure. Just don't lose it. The glossy-eyed corpse looks by, his mouth mute and his skin as colorful as the chemical rainbow on the photo paper, teeming with opportunistic organisms. His eyes are milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from their sockets. There is no one home, just subaquatic terrors there. Dark brown hair grows on his head. His face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. The death's head grin has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. Underneath the curdled meat there is an expression, not carried on his features, but below, inside, an expression of pleasure. This man was experiencing joy at the moment of his death. Why do you think so? Okay. I'm gone. Oh, that's right. Into the wild pile yonder, in the past, way out in the west. I'm a joke. Look at me. A killer, a motherfucker, and a killer. Go ahead, Cobo. Maybe I was getting my rocks off. Do I look like an erotic auto-asphyxiation type to you? Captain Copadromo? I fear we are drifting away 
fixating on sexuality again. Let's go with a simpler question. He didn't choke himself. You know it. Maybe I was getting my... It's a mishmash, Coppabolo. You think I'm Messinian, don't you? For you, this is how people from Messina speak like. Well, I'm not from Messina, am I? My hair is too light a shade of brown. Trust your inner racist. You think I am. You think I was a racist because this lump looks military and has tattoos. That's called profiling. Do I look like an erotic auto-asphyxiation type to Captain Coppadromo? He didn't choke himself. You know it. What do you mean? It's the power of your... Imagination. Yeah, man! Don't be crazy! Inanimate objects and dead people can't really talk to you. Your wild imagination is doing this. Ask some more of those questions you love so much. Jeez. He loves those. Because you're a copperoonie. Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? Here you go, you loony. <laughs> Fuck no. You're no Rooney. Between you and me, your name is probably Harry. You might be onto something there. Because you have. Do I remind you of someone? A child born with Muller's disease, Harlequinism, grown up miraculously. You sure I got out of that one? Coppolini. Come back later, Coppo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also, see me in your dreams. As you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink. This is a trick. You've done it before. Pink is where the blood settled in the first hours post-mortem. You can use it to see if the corpse has been tampered with. Does his position at the time of death match the discoloration? Only the lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue. His fatted hands, thighs, and his neck just above the noose. The rest of the corpse appears dark green in the cold spring air. I see it. His neck too. The lividity goes right up his chin. We have good, well-pronounced discoloration here. The monster comes back into focus, an explosion of color coursing with dark marbled veins. His stomach appears pregnant with something. Black liquid streams down his thigh and onto his boot. So, what do you think? Agreed. Especially on the neck. The belt acted like a tourniquet, keeping the blood in his head. The hypostasis supports her hanging. There's always a chance. 
We should check for ligament marks on his neck to see if they're in tune with the belt. We'll have to get him down first. I agree. There are crow's feet in his eyes. He's laughing silently. Totally dead. Absolutely. The pool of blood and feces has eaten into the frozen mud below the man's feet. Purge liquid is dripping into it, drop by drop. The victim appears to have contained no more than half a kilogram of digestion at the time of death. The fuck he's saying? <sighs> Talking about shit. Maybe. I do. Most of them are post-mortem. Maybe even all of them. The delinquents have made our jobs harder with their little sport. Stop talking in riddles, coin slot. He means you fucked him up good, Kuno. Fucked him up brutal like. But there is no breath to catch. Only the cadaver filling the air and your nostrils. He slowly rotates before you, decomposing. Of course. You have questions, don't you? The power of your... imagination. Is at your service. Come back later, Corpo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my... Are you sure we finished the preliminary examination of the cadaver? We might miss some of these things once he's done. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt. The material, delicate and fresh. These are clearly not boots. They're armor. Possible. Indeed. Technical. It's all you, baby. Ceramic plate. Under the heel. Fair weather. Fairweather model T5. This feels dangerous. The stench fills your nostrils. As you push downward, an ominous creaking sound comes from above. Stop! Pig's gonna pull his head off. <coughs> Brutal! <laughs> You're going to pull his head off. Do it, homo! Pull his head off. There's no point performing an autopsy if you do. We'll have compromised the coroner's case. Indeed. From this angle, it does look like the neck isn't going to take much more. Being dead for a week has all but liquefied his muscles. What are you trying to achieve, anyway? Why are you hanging on to that boot? Try what, exactly? I don't think we should do anything just for the hell of it. Besides, there's no way you're getting them off. All the organic matter in his body has been flowing down into the boots. They are fused to his feet now. Why do you think the locals haven't scavenged them yet? There might still be a way to peel them off, but first, the body needs to be down. And second, it would probably be better if the lieutenant wasn't around. <laughs> Alright then, you can pay the hostel bill in honor points. How many honor points have you collected? <laughs> of course there aren't. Don't be naive. You still feel as though there might be some honor points. And if there are, you've surely earned one. Processing will take care of them. With the situation in the morgue, it will yield nothing. But we must pick our fights. Should we continue? 
The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos. Hmm. The steel reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters, but I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, there's the question of cutting the airship strength material. Speed. Yeah, this is a hard choice. Everything's a hard choice. I was really hoping we wouldn't. The Union appeared to be suspect in this case. It seems like a dangerous route to go down. But what other options? The corpse twists on the belt, like chicken on a skewer. Climb up there and saw the branch? 
There has to be a less risky way, with less falling down of trees. Someone else? You mean, like, the police? Someone like a paid garbage man? Or a cleaning crew? I have bad news for you. That is, a detective. I know it's hard, but I assure you, the others won't come to help us. And we have a growing sanitary concern here. We need to get him down, fast. ties the rope to the branch. That's a good spot to aim. Where? Ah, yes, I see. If the shot hits that, there might be a chance to release the belt. Yeah, now we're talking. Entertain the Kuno with some shit. They'll miss. The pigs will miss Kuno. The lieutenant is undecided. On one hand, he wants to shoot some gun. On the other, it's an awfully stupid idea. But what else can we do? We are not getting him down already. Not getting him down is a task that's already accomplished. Sadly, it's not our job to keep him up there, but to get him down. How do you plan to get him down then? With social sensibility? Are you going to educate him down? Hmm. Yes, we do. Okay. They do have the tools and the men. And since it looks like they put him there... Yeah, let's do that, because it seems like shooting him down, the impact could cause him to explode or some other nastiness. <sighs> okay. Let's do it in the lousy, dangerous way. From the gates, by negotiating or fighting. I'm unenthusiastic about fighting. Or we can try to find some secret third path. It's an ugly though. To ask the suspect for help with the victim's body? To be indebted to Evrard Claire? Very much, yes. Which is why I would have preferred us to handle this ourselves. Clearly we can't. Suck my dick, bitches! Oh my God. He's a dangerous and corrupt man, and we cannot predict what he will want from us in return. Yeah, don't go being someone else's bitches. You're Kuno's bitches. Lonesome. Long way home. <laughs> Didn't mean to click it. See, learning cat for perception is five. Speed gives one second. Here we go, home awaits. Walk past Station 41 and go through the market. Past the Boogie Street Spearhead to the other side of the lake. The pros and I at the center of the district. Then past the video rental store on the corner. There at the end of a street lined with pine trees. A small house no larger than a matchbox. Eleven Voyager Road. You no longer live there. Those times are gone, but so are those people. Why did you come here? Why are you still here? Um, where's the dealer? You have to get back to work. That's all you have.
An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso of the hanged man, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time the lines intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. It still kind of looks like a map of the stars in the night sky, but something's not right. Gone. For you to discover, you've gotten as far as you will without assistance. Someone close to the victim might know. Someone who knows about history could tell you. Okay, well, we learned a lot, and I went over my time. Jeez, well, we learned a whole lot, but hopefully I'll remember the next time I play, <laughs> uh, which hopefully we'll be able to get another time of Tuesday next week, as it'll be spring break for many people. Um, but yeah, it was awesome catching up playing. Whew, hopefully we'll be a little bit farther and further solve this mystery. Um, yeah. But I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Wow, I gotta remember my spiel here because it's been a while. Um, if you're watching me on Twitch, thank you so much. Please give me a like and a follow. That way you can get notifications whenever I go live, the newest videos, um, streams. Come hang out with me in chat. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much. Please like and subscribe. That way you can get notifications on the newest videos. Fill Please feel free to leave me a comment, tell me what you liked, didn't like, or any other random things on your mind. Um, you can find me both on Twitch and at YouTube by putting in my handle, again, at Stumpwater underscore Jack. Um, I don't have an extra life up yet, but I do plan on doing it again this year, so say my on all of that. Um... Yeah, oh, and I'm so far Jack, and I have a shiny spell shack. Um, feel free to join the Discord on both uh, Twitch and YouTube. I have links in there under that um, to join my Discord. It's my good, full, cool, fun place to hang out, share memes. You'll be the first ones to get uh, schedule updates and notifications when I'm going to go live, and also be able to vote on future games and other stuff. But really, to make that place grow, come. Uh, hang out and join us out there. So anyways, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys for next time on Tuesday, which should be next week. Uh, thank you guys so much, and I'll see you again next time. Oh, and remember to bring a little bit of magic to the world. Alright, see you guys. Bye!